Good afternoon, everyone. Well, welcome this afternoon for the High Involvement Planning Q&A webinar. Uh, appreciate everyone uh, attending this afternoon. Um, again, this webinar uh, is conducted basically to provide some questions of upcoming workshop that we're having and hosting in, on March uh, 21st and 22nd. And we want to give everybody an opportunity to ask any kind of questions they may have about that upcoming workshop or any particular questions they may have about high involvement planning. So I appreciate everyone attending. Um, uh, just a little bit of a, a technical and logistics uh, to share is that we do have a chat window. So if there's some questions that you have um, that you would like to share, please use the chat window and uh, I will pick those up and, and try to get those answered. Uh, prior to this uh, webinar, we did have some questions that were already posed, so I'll, I'll use those first, and uh, and we'll get through as many as we possibly can here in the next 30 minutes. So again, thank you for attending. I want to take just basically the first uh, uh, three to five minutes here to talk a little bit about high involvement planning and kind of set the stage. Um, I'm assuming that most of you that are on uh, this webinar um, are familiar with the Great Game of Business process. Um, and sorry, I'm just trying to use the slides here. Um, the, the basic process for the, for the Great Game of Business, um, uh, the HIP, I should say, the High Involvement Planning process, um, is a practice within the whole entire Great Game of Business process practice and uh, it is a very critical part of the uh, great game of business practice because it's really about the sustainability of the game. Um, I would tell you that from my experience at SRC it's been really the linchpin in terms of our success with the game over the last 35 years. It's what's kept it sustainable, it's kept it exciting, engaging over the years. Um, but it is a process that we suggest some practitioners uh, get into later in their journey of practicing the great game, maybe 12, 24 months into practicing the great game of business, because it's really important for us to start with kind of the foundational practices of the game first. So just give me one second and see if I can get these items to slide. Okay, very good, very good. Um, so again, the basic overall practices of the, great, the game is, is based on really three core principles. Um, one is to educate the employees about the business so people begin to think, act, think like owners. Second is empower the employees uh, to use that knowledge of the business to actually make better decisions and to begin to act like owners of the business. And lastly, to engage those employees by providing a mistake in the outcome. If we're able to improve the results of the company, What's in it for me? What's in it for the employees? So they begin to feel like owners of the business. Now, of course, those practices are centered around uh, sp specific, uh, those principles are centered around some specific practices that we teach. Um, and so, for example, in Know and Teach the Rules, there's financial transparency and education, the idea of the critical number, but also the high involvement planning process, which is what we'll focus on here today. Um, on the follow the action, it's about keeping score and scoreboards without the within the company. Follow the action through a series of huddles and then the forward forecasting practice. And then, of course, staking the outcomes is a reward and recognition, mini games, and ownership. And again, these are all the practices that kind of make up the, the overall process of the great game of business. But today, we're going to really focus on what we call high involvement planning. Um, again, just to position this a bit, in terms of an implementation journey that we would suggest for a, a practitioner, um, we really start with the idea of just experiencing the game first, of giving, an, a, a, giving you an opportunity to maybe visit with practitioners, come to SRC, see our living lab, figure out if this is right for you and your organization. Then we go into what we would call design the game, to design the game specifically for you, the foundational practices uh, that I just shared with you, some of those basic items like mini games and scoreboards and, and huddles. Some of those foundational practices embed those into the, into the company. And then play the game and see some of those initial results that you can get from it. Um, and then finally, how do we sustain the game? And that's really where high involvement planning uh, lies, is the ability to move kind of from that kind of 90 day view of your company or an annual view of, of where your business is going to more of a three to five year view of the of the business and 
looking at it from a, a big picture sense and, and uh, how uh, give, give the employees a more um, understanding of what the big picture looks like and where they see themselves and the organizations three or four, three to five years out. So this is where, where we would uh, position a lot of the practices that we talk about within the high involvement planning process. So the workshop that we have coming up on March 21st and 22nd is really designed, it's a two-day workshop that's really designed to equip you and your team with the tools and the practices and the know-how that, that our coaches use and that we've used over the years at SRC to sustain a high involvement planning process, um, where you consistently are involving and forming, educating the entire organization on the realities of the marketplace and the company's strategy for growth. Uh, the other benefit of the workshop is it's also a place for you to learn and share and discuss kind of the unique uh, challenges and rewards of running a workplace uh, open book. Um, usually we have a lot of practitioners in the room that have been playing the game at various levels um, and it gets an opportunity for them to share some of the things that are happening and, 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 and maybe uh, use kind of the group setting to help each other with the success of open book management. Probably the other really uh, uh, nice add to this workshop is the ability for you to visit our living lab, which is SRC Holdings, the parent company. Um, uh, this gives you an opportunity not only to see the practice of high involvement planning in action, but visit with the people that actually have to do it day in and day out. So part of the workshop, we would certainly include um, a panel of some of the, the leadership uh, from, from vice president level to general manager level to the sales and marketing team, um, people that you can visit with and ask them questions and get more insight in terms of how to use some of these practices within your business. Um, so I think that's a great opportunity. You also have an opportunity to listen directly from one of our sales and marketing directors and see the presentation that was at, that was that they had delivered just here back in October, which is part of the rhythm. So you'll get to see exactly uh, some of the tools, some of the practices and things that we'll teach in the workshop. You'll see how they've applied it themselves here at SRC. So that's a you know, little added benefit of uh, attending here at, at SRC. So I want to talk about just quickly some success factors and then the templates. So you get a, kind of a little bit of understanding of the, the things that we would be talking about and sharing within this workshop. And then I'm going to open it up for Q&A and, and, and uh, answer any questions you guys may have about the program um, and, of course, the workshop. First, there's, there's really four success factors that we'll touch on within uh, the HIP wor workshop. These are and the reason I would call these success factors are these are the things that really have that we've seen over the last 35 years at SRC and also working with clients that really are the basis, the foundation of making planning work. So we come up with good plans that we can execute on and that we feel uh, people are bought in and, 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 and ready to uh, follow through on. Um, so I want to walk through those real quick. The first one is a foundational mantra you'll hear all the way through Great Game, but primarily in HIP, is the idea that people support what they help cre create. Um, one of the quotes I often use from Jack is, the way you produce the plan is just as important as the plan itself. You know, to really get ownership and ensure results, they, you really need to focus on how the plans are created and how people are involved in that process. Um, another kind of mantra that we use is that people don't if the people don't participate in the process, they're probably not going to buy in. And if they're not going to buy in, they're probably not going to commit. And if they don't commit, they're not going to deliver. So we want to find a way for people to participate in the process, to buy in to the plans that we are to create, and we have a more likelihood that the, you know, the plan will be successful because people are, are committed to delivering that plan. So the idea is to move or shift that mindset from that's your plan, that's leadership's plan, to this is our plan. And we're, we're all responsible and accountable to, to achieving it. So that's a, that's a big success factor that we'll talk a lot about in the workshop and how we use tools and practices to help pull that off. Um, the next one is really about how, how can we play a game if you don't know what game you're in, right? So it really comes back down to making sure that the plan is rooted in reality. Um, there's too many examples of companies that have gone through extensive strategic planning or 
financial planning, they've done it really with, the, with what they consider the smartest people in the room or the leadership team. They build a plan in kind of isolation and then they move and they hand it down to the rest of the organization. First of all, that kind of process doesn't necessarily create a lot of buy-in, but often it also doesn't include much sense of what the, real, the reality of the situation is and what the marketplace is telling us in terms of the challenges we may have. So we, we spend a lot of time in making sure that our strategy is built on that, that reality. And in fact, good plans uh, with a lot of broad participation, those specifically, those people that are, that are closest to the action are the ones that uh, will, create the be- uh, is, is, will, will create better plans. So we want to provide um, the best possible understanding of those ri- realities by getting broad participation in the plan. The next one is planning uh, acceler- uh, rhythms accelerate learning. So we're real big on creating a rhythm in terms of our planning process. The annual rhythm is not good enough anymore. It's not, it's not frequent enough. Things are changing so rapidly that you have to find ways to take time out and look at where you are in the marketplace, look at where you are with your planning and, and the success with your planning and be able to make those, those adjustments. Um, Business is always unfolding, so there's a lot of uh, new questions to be answered, so we try to put a a rhythm in place to be able to accomplish that. It's really not unlike what you're doing with your weekly huddles within the the basic foundational game practices, is that the weekly huddles give you an opportunity to call time out, to see what the deviations are, to call new plays, to adjust. We're doing the same thing, but rather than on an annual or 90-day pattern, we're looking at a three- to five-year pattern and trying to keep people um, abreast on how we are looking in terms of long-term strategy of the business. Um, so, you know, an intent of the HIP process is to accelerate the learning and to develop some kind of pa- uh, pattern and planning rhythm so people can learn to deal with strategic issues and, and sharpen their strategic thinking, which ultimately is what we're trying to get from everyone in the company. And then the last thing is planning is one thing, execution is everything. So it circles right back to the basic foundational practices of the game. Um, everything from your huddle, huddles to your mini games, to your critical number, to your bonus plans, uh, to your forward forecasting that you use within the game. Those are all good execution tools. Those will take you know, our beautiful plans and, and find a way to, to um, actually pull them off and execute on them with the basic foundations of the game. So. These dis- this discipline ap- approach to working a plan and dealing with market changes keeps everyone focused and accountable for the results. So again, all of those, those are just the success factors we'll talk a lot about, but what's most important is what tools, what practices, what processes do we use in our planning process to actually accomplish these um, uh, um, and, and make this a reality. So a question you may need to you know, ask yourself as you're looking at high involvement planning is does your, how does your current planning process stack up to these success factors? Do you have a way to get everybody involved? Do you have a way to make sure that the reality is put into your plan? Do you have a way to um, have frequent planning rhythms within uh, your company so you stay um, uh, true to the changes that are happening in our marketplace so fast? And then do you have a good way of executing on it? Um, some of the things that you may uh, consider as you're looking at HIP. Um, the, there will be four different planning templates that we will share within the workshop that really are the basis behind um, our planning process to be able to, believe, to help us with those success factors. Um, one is a sales and marketing presentation template. The next is a, what we call a strategy for growth playbook t- template. First, the sales and marketing presentation is what we use to make sure that we do bring the reality of the marketplace uh, to everyone um, on a frequent basis. The strategy for growth is all about creating uh, what is the strategy? What's the how behind the plan? What are the specific things we're going to do to achieve our, our goals? Uh, the financial plan, that's, that's basically summing up, you know, how are we going to fund the, fund the plan? And, and are we going to make any money with this plan? And then last one is really the people strategy. It's, it's really addressing the who. Who's going to be able to help us execute in this plan? Uh, you know, the butts in the right seats, right? And uh, the right people in the right seats. And, and we'll talk a lot about that succession plan and how we look at our people strategy. Um, 
all of those are lined up into a planning rhythm and are used um, throughout the year to help us not only build our continue, build our plan, but continually adjust our plan to, to, to fit whatever changes we see in the marketplace. So we'll spend quite a bit of time in the workshop talking about the rhythm itself um, and how the process is, is laid out and what kind of involvement is needed from various people within the organization um, and uh, how that can help you build uh, stronger plans. So I'm going to leave that at there and, um, and move right to the Q&A. Hopefully you have a little bit of a foundation of what we will talk about at the workshop. Um, again, uh, the chat function is open. So please, if there's any questions that you guys have right out of the gate, please ask some questions in the chat. Uh, but to get things started, I'm going to use uh, some of the questions that were, were provided to us before. Um, actually, the first uh, question um, is really addresses a bit on this uh, high involvement planning rhythm. So uh, the first question is, can you describe what cycle of huddles and planning might look like? Um, we have daily huddles, weekly huddles, and are starting to get into high involvement planning. What are the best practices, the process, the timing, the who, um, which is obviously a pretty big question, but I'll try to answer that fairly quickly and, and also um, use the slide that I have right, uh, up right now. Um, again, I mentioned earlier that the cycle, planning cycle, we try to treat a lot like we do with the uh, um, great game um, uh, management cycle with the huddles and the weekly huddles and, and that sort of thing. It's not really any different when you're talking about high involvement planning, you're just looking at it in terms of further out in terms of the planning of your organization. Um, so again, if you, if you look at uh, you know, this particular slide, it, it addresses the templates that we use, the planning templates that we use, and then how often we meet in terms of those planning templates. So um, the, 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 the rhythm is that we look at our marketplace at least twice a year. Uh, from a sales and marketing presentation to bring our marketplace in to understand where our competition is what what are our customers saying about us what are the what is the market and economic climate that, and environment that we're, we're we're currently in and we bring all that information back to our people to understand clearly what game are we in and what environment are we playing in so we can um, uh, adjust and, and, and develop uh, uh, plans accordingly the second part of the process or template that we use is a strategy for growth review. And that's either a quarterly or a trimester rhythm. Um, we use a trimester rhythm at SRC Holdings and some of our practitioners use that. Um, so every four months that the leadership team is getting together, together to uh, talk about not only their long-term strategy, but their short-term strategy identifying uh, specific strategic priorities that they want to focus on over the next three to four uh, months and continually chip away on the long-term um, strategies of the organization. So again, that's the frequency, that rhythm that we talk about so we can, we can constantly adjust the plan accordingly to the marketplace. Um, the financial plan is created on an annual basis, so our planning process would start um, sometime in the, uh, you know, the September, October period, and then finalize in December. Um, that is um, done on an on a annual basis based on our strategic plans. But again, the financials are constantly looking at, uh, look, looked at in terms of our weekly huddles and our, our monthly uh, um, uh, uh, planning cycles and that sort of thing for our financials. So, the financials are consistent around uh, the great game of business pra practice, as, as you guys well know. Um, and then succession planning, we look at that about mid-year, uh, one, one time a year that we take basically the, the annual and three-year, three to five-year plans that we put together and look at what kind of people resources that we need to be able to su su uh, support that plan. Um, so that's a once, once a year rhythm. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an understanding of you know, uh, what the rhythm of the planning is, but also uh, some of the people that are involved um, uh, in the process. Obviously, this is called high involvement planning, so we get as many people involved in the process as we possibly can. Um, 
but primarily we want them to participate in the process so they have greater buy-in in terms of the plan um, as we go forward. One of the next questions um, was how much time should I carve out on high embalma plan throughout the year? Please break it down by quarter, month, and week. Hopefully I've, I've done that here. Again, you know, the sales and marketing presentations, you're looking at, you know, those could be a half a day based on the size of the company. Um, the strategy for growth reviews are usually one to two days. Uh, when you really get into the rhythm, you can probably, uh, you know, do those types of, uh, pro, you know, those types of um, uh, meetings in, a, in about a day. Uh, maybe one of those uh, sessions is a two-day planning session to be able to set up the next year. Uh, of course, the financial plan is built over time. So when it starts in uh, September, October period, uh, again, we try to complete the entire financial plan by um, within, a, within about a two to three month period uh, to set up the next year. Um, and then succession plan is usually, uh, depending on the size of the company, is you know a half day, full day to uh, talk specifically about your your people needs um, and the resources that you need to support the plan. Okay. Um, next, there was a question: who who should be involved in the process? Small groups, different groups at each time, every team member each time. So these are all questions about. Um, who's involved and, and uh, what groups are involved. Um, again, it is high involvement planning, so we're trying to include everyone in that process. Um, I'm a big believer that you know, ultimately leadership is going to create the strategy, but that strategy and that plan should uh, be fed based on the input of everyone in the organization. So we do a couple of surveys per year that really gets the input and uh, suggestions from the employees. So there's some involvement from the employees in that respect. And then twice a year during the sales and marketing presentations, we uh, provide those presentations to everyone in the organization. So they can provide what we would call a confidence, uh, a confidence rating or a buy-in rating. Um, and we'll talk a lot about that in our in our workshop of how we conduct those. But basically, we want to understand is what what's the level of confidence that our people have in the plans that we have put together, and what questions do they have? Um, are we communicating it well? Um, do they believe in 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 the plan that we've put in place? Um, all things that are very critical when you try to go in and try to execute this plan. Let me see. Is there any other questions coming? up on chat. Um, here's one. If an organization is just starting out with GGOB and are in the process of determining the first critical number, at what point should we introduce high involvement planning? Um, I think that's a very good question because we we have a we have a, a, a a bit of a philosophy behind this is that when we're working with companies that have not yet implemented great game of business um, is that the first thing we really want them to focus on is to uh, implement the foundational practices of the game. So um, yes, it is identifying a critical number, but we may do that in terms of uh, getting input from the employees and uh, you know, looking at your basic financial information and some of the cre critical issues you may have in the company. Um, but we want you to set that critical number we want you to get into a huddle rhythm we want to want you to get into a forecasting rhythm we'd like you to develop you know some good at least top level financial scoreboards if not departmental level scoreboards and start the mini game process have a simple bonus plan all those foundational great game practices once you've um, done that what what you're doing is you're you're, you're trying to create um, some engagement and also an ability to execute on good plans and get those things in place first. Um, this is high involvement planning, so we want to we want everyone to partic participate in the process. So it's important that we can raise that level of business literacy first. So we ask companies take the first six twelve months, um, uh, really using the foundational practices of the game to raise the level of business literacy and raise the level of engagement 
you have with the employees around the business first, and then move into high involvement planning. Because then you have an organization that can directly participate. Uh, they're going to be more engaged, uh, more uh, um, excited about the process in terms of understanding where the company is going and what direction we're going to take the company. So um, hopefully that gives you a little bit of uh, understanding of where we kind of place high involvement planning uh, in the process. It's a very good question. So we have about another five minutes. So I'll scroll down here on some other questions. Um, let's see. So here's, here's an interesting question because I know that there's a lot of organizations that we work with that, that maybe have not implemented the great game of business, but are doing some kind of longer term strategic planning uh, within their company. So we often get this question is how do you integrate the HIP process or high involvement planning process with a company's existing strategic planning process? Um, and I would, you know, I would say that it really depends on what planning process you're using. I think the thing to think about is um, the, the, the core differences between what we would see as high involvement planning versus your standard strategic planning is the fact that we're trying to get more people involved in the process. So that's the first way to integrate it is, okay, what should, how, how does your existing strategic planning process get other people involved or more people within the organization involved? in terms of their feedback or their, um, uh, you know, their input in terms of in, into the process. Um, so I'd ask yourself that first. Um, the second thing I would ask is um, how much reality is built into your strategic planning? Um, you know, there is, there are a lot of strategic planning processes there that are really kind of tailored to the leadership team um, to do most of the planning and most of the strategic planning. And that can still be, you know, a good process and is certainly part of the high involvement planning process as well. But are you bringing the reality of the marketplace into that meeting or is it just, um, you know, doing a SWOT analysis twice a year or something like that? Um, one of the most impactful things about HIP that I've personally seen over the years and, and our practitioners have certainly experienced from HIP is the sales and marketing process twice a year where we encourage the sales and marketing team and the organization to take a template and really tell us what's happening in the marketplace from the, you know, the, the economic client uh, climate to the, to the, to, to their specific industry and market to what the competition is doing, what the customers think of us. Um, what's their contingency plans? Um, uh, what's their growth plans? What new products are they looking at? All those things are part of what we call our sales and marketing template that we'll talk about in great length at the, at the workshop. But what that does is it, it really forces the organization to take stock in their, um, the marketplace they're in and how successful they are in that marketplace at least twice a year so that we know, again, what game we're in. So you can make better plans and make better adjustments. Um, so I think that's a, that's a process that I don't see very often in standard strategic planning processes. So, so that's something that you could integrate into an existing plan as well. So I think we only have about a minute left, but I'll, I'll tell you what, um, there are a few more questions that have popped up on the chat. So I'm going to stick around for another five minutes, answer a few more questions. You guys are, you know, um, uh, perfectly welcome to stay on with me for the next five, 10 minutes to go through these uh, couple more questions. Um, or if not, if you, as you guys are, are leaving, I would, would uh, tell you that um, we're going to provide you a link after this webinar that will link you to the HIP workshop um, uh, section of our website. Um, I've also told the team that I'm, I'm, uh, happy to share um, a few of the HIP tools that we'll go over in the workshop uh, so you guys get um, a sample of what the sales and marketing template looks like and then also the strategy for growth template. Um, something for you guys to play around with and, and use 
um, but it also gives you a sample of some of the things that we would be sharing in the workshop. So hopefully I'll see you guys in on the 21st or 22nd. If you guys have any other additional questions about the workshop, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. So I'm just going to take the next five five minutes or so and answer a couple more questions that popped up and uh, then we'll uh, wrap up the webinar and it looks like uh, the team has uh, added the uh, workshop link uh, to the chat so you can uh, just connect directly to that from your chat window so um what one of the other questions that came up was um what is the first step for forecasting if you have no idea how to do this? Um, so it's interesting because HIP is, is, is definitely all about forecasting because we're trying to put together a plan or at least do our initial forecast and planning over a, you know, a six to 12 month period and then on to three to five year uh, period of time. And I know that sounds extremely crazy that you could actually put a forecast and a plan that you could depend on over a three to five year period but we've seen that done. Um, I can tell you this last five year period for SRC Holdings, we were overall for all the business units rolled up, we were 97% accurate on that forecast in terms of the total revenue of the company. Now certainly bits and pieces were, were different within the plan, but the overall uh, forecast was extremely close. So it can be done. And I think the, you know, the first step with any kind of forecasting process is just to get started set a target and forecast against it. Um, the basic formula for forecasting in terms of our mind is that you have data that you, that, that you have access to, you're gonna make some assumptions and, and, and then multiply that by the frequency and you're gonna get better on the forecasting. So it's really just to be able to get, uh, to do it on a frequent basis and to begin to understand what drives your forecast or what influences your forecast and understand you know the stories behind those numbers um, forecasting is such a fundamental process for um, great game of business for a couple of reasons one it helps you get better results because the better you can forecast the better you can plan behind it the more money you can make from it you know so the, the better you're you're able to, to forecast the more control you have of your business um, but the other real critical um, outcome for you know for forecasting is that it's a great way to teach people the numbers because ultimately a good forecast is a reflection of how well they understand the number they're forecasting right they know what's influencing it some of those things may be inside their control some of it be may, may be outside their control but at least they know what is influencing that forecast and the more you know about your number and the more things you more uh, understanding you have of what influences that number the better control you have of your business. So I think that's that's really what it comes down to in terms of the control or the, the forecasting process. The one other, one additional question was um, really about drivers and, and it was, uh, do you use driver-based planning and budgeting where the, the drivers that can be tied to a goal are used to generate down downstream results? And I think this question is, really targeted at, at a practice that you see pretty common out there in terms of um, uh, driver-based planning um, and uh, building more robust financial plans by using you know, uh, certain uh, computer-based drivers, that sort of thing. But the, the process itself is really foundational the way that we plan anyway, because, and we actually use the term driver. So we may have some outcomes in terms of our sales and marketing plan that, 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 that we put together in terms of, let's say it's you know, the overall revenue of the, of the organization. But we know some things that, that, that really drive that particular revenue stream or things within the, in the, in the business that have, to be, that have to be in place in terms of resources to support that revenue plan. So an example of that, a real easy example is that, of that is that when we're working with our employees and their involvement in our plans, um, it's nice in a manufacturing, let's say at SRC in a manufacturing environment, you know, it's nice for them to know, hey, you know, that the business is, is going to be a $10 million business next year. But what's really important to the employees is how many hours that provides in the shop. 
you know, how many additional people is that going to require? Um, what kind of other resources is needed to support that $10 million? Those are really the questions that are going through your people, your, 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 your people, uh, is, uh, minds in terms of, of, of uh, that $10 million revenue line. Um, those are really what we would consider the drivers of the organization. So to be able to put together a good financial plan, we need to know those drivers. We, need, we do need to know that $10 million plan, you know, what products are made up into that plan, um, how many hours uh, does that put in the shop, um, what kind of a capital equipment are we going to need to support that plan. Those are kind of the things that we would work out so that, that, that we know all the drivers that are actually going to impact that overall uh, sales and marketing plan. So um, those were the last two questions I saw that was on the chat. So um, hopefully, again, uh, those that stayed over, that was helpful for them. But uh, again, thank you for joining us. And uh, if you have any additional questions about high involvement planning or the upcoming workshop on March 21st, 22nd, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. And thank you guys. Thanks for joining us.